Okay then gang, so far we've only used providers to provide read-only data to consumer widgets, but what if that state needs to change at some point, for example, in reaction to a user event like a button click? Well, in that case, we'd need a function defined somewhere to update that provider state, and we'd also need any consumers to be notified about that change so they can get the up-to-date state and rerun their build functions. Now, to allow this functionality of updating the provider state and then notifying consumers, we have to make a different kind of provider. And that type of provider is called a notifier provider because guess what? It can notify listeners or consumers about changes to the state. So then we're going to make a new provider in this lesson, which is going to provide state for the shopping cart. And that state is going to be a set of whatever products are currently in the cart. So we need the ability to change that state to add products or to remove products. And we also need to notify any consumer widgets when that state changes. For example, when we add a new product. So we'll be using a notify provider to do this. The first thing I'll do though is make a new file inside the providers folder called cart underscore notifier dot dart so that we can make the provider inside that file. And by the way, we'll be making this notify provider manually first of all, and then we'll be looking at how we can generate notify providers using the annotation package and the Riverpod generator in a later lesson. Now, the way we make a notify provider is by first of all making a class, and you can call this class whatever you want, but typically I call it something notifier. So since we're working with cart states, I would call it maybe cart notifier. And then this class needs to extend another class from Riverpod called notifier which contains the ability to essentially notify consumer widgets about state changes in the future. Now, this notifier is also a generic class, and that means we can pass in the type of data this notifier will be working with, and ultimately what data we'll be providing to consumer widgets. So that's going to be the type of data our state will be, and that will be a set this time, not a list, because I don't want duplicate products to be in the state. So inside the set, we also have product objects and we can type that as well. All right then, so inside this class, we can do two things. The first thing we do is define the initial value of the state, which we'll do in a moment by defining a build method and then returning it from that. And the second thing we do is we can make methods inside this class, which can then alter the states. And we'll do that later on, probably in maybe the next lesson. Now, before we make this initial state, I want to make something clear. This class here is not a provider in itself. It's just a class. And later on, we're going to make the actual notifier provider, which in turn then uses this class to provide the state that we define here, right? Okay, so let's make this build method then where we can define and return some initial states. So then the way we do this is by using the override keyword, first of all, because we're overriding a method here. And that is going to be the build method. All right. Now we're going to return some data inside here, which will be our initial state essentially. And we can type this build function right here to say what type of data it's going to return. Now that is going to be the same as this thing up here, a set of product objects. So let me paste it in right there just to type it out. And then we just need to return that set right here. Now, later on initially, the initial value is going to be an empty set like this, right? But just so we have some states in there for now, what I'm going to do is create a product. And in fact, I'm just going to paste it in. So you don't have to watch me type this out from scratch. And this product right here just has an ID, a title, price, and an image path as well. So we're saying that the initial state for this cart thing is going to be this set with one single product inside it. We're essentially saying the cart has one product in it, right? But later on, like I said, this will be an empty set to begin with. And in fact, this can be a constant for now. So let's put const right here. All right, cool. So now we have the build method right here and we're returning the initial state inside it. All right then. So now we need to actually create a provider to provide this thing to any widgets that need the data. Because like I said, this is not a provider. So let's come down here and make that provider by saying final. And then this is going to be called cart notifier provider. And we set it equal to something. Now you don't have to call it this. I tend to call it whatever this is with provider on the end of it. And later when we use generated code, um, Riverpod is going to use the same kind of naming convention as well. So we set that equal to this time a notifier provider. Now before when we created the read only 
providers, it was just provider like that. But now it's a notifier provider because we're providing a notifier this time, not just a single value, not just a read-only value, okay? And in fact, what we're going to be providing is an instance of this class we created up here, all right? Okay, so this is a generic right here, and we pass in two types. First of all, the type of this, so cart notifier. And then the second type, which is the type of data that's working with, which is this thing. So grab that as well and paste that in right here. Let me close this so we have more room. And then, oops, we don't need angle brackets over there. So we can get rid of that one and that one. Okay, so then inside here, we can pass in a function, which is going to return an instance of this cart notifier, like so. And that's all we need to do. So this is the provider we now use inside widgets if we want to access the data or watch the data and so forth. And all that's doing is providing an instance of this cart notifier class we created, which has some initial state. So now when we get the data, it's going to give us this set right here to begin with. But later on, like I said, we can update that as well. For now, what we'll do is save this file and we'll try using this cart notifier provider inside one of our widgets. And actually, we're going to access this in two different widgets. First of all, the cart screen widget, because we want to output the cart product, which is this thing at the minute right here inside this widget. But also we want to access it in the home screen widget because we're going to dynamically output a button at the bottom of each product here that either says add to cart or remove from cart. Now it's going to say add to cart if this item is currently inside this set right here, the cart product, or rather, if it's not inside, sorry, it's going to say add to cart and it's going to say remove from cart or remove or something like that if it's already in this set right here. So we need to access this state to be able to determine which button to output. All right, let's go then to the cart screen, first of all, because this is a simple one. Now, at the moment, the products we output come from the reduced products provider, but we don't want to use that anymore. Instead, we want to use the cart products or the cart notifier rather provider right here. It should auto import that for you when you click on it. I'm going to get rid of this one because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to save this and hopefully over here we just see the one red backpack. Awesome. Okay, so that's the first one sorted. Next, we want to access it inside the home screen. So let's open up that widget, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is access this right here underneath all products. I will say final cart products and set that equal to ref dot watch. And then inside here, we want the cart notifier provider. Click on that to auto import it, this thing right here. So we have that value and now we can use it down here in the template. And I want to use it right here in children. So for each one of these things right here in the grid, we output an image, text, and text. I also want to output one of two buttons now. Now, what I'm going to do is paste in some code and walk you through it. So we do an if check, and we say, look, if the cart product, which is this thing up here we just grabbed, if that contains the current product we're iterating throughout all products, because that's what we're iterating in the grid. So if it contains that, then I want to output a text button where the text inside that says remove because it already exists in cart products, right? This is true. Cart products contains that product. We do nothing for the function, but we will later. Now, on the flip side of that, we do the same thing, but with a not or exclamation mark in front of this to reverse it. So we're basically saying if now it doesn't contain that particular product, then we want to add a button that says add to cart instead. So Let's save this and we should see those buttons, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. This one says remove because it's the backpack that's already in the cart. Okay. Now, when we click on these, nothing happens at the minute, but we'll flesh out these functions later when we come to change the state, because that's what that's ultimately going to do. If we click on this one, it's going to add it to that set right here, this thing. If we click on the remove one, this one, then this function is going to try and call a different method which will remove it from this set right here, okay? But now what we've done is we've created a notifier provider, which is, like I said, 
a provider that allows us to define some initial state, but also allows us to create methods to update that state, which we're going to do shortly. And we've accessed that now inside the cart screen to list out the cart products, but also in the home screen to dynamically output one of two different buttons.